Now we have a very special contribution from Sun Jiqing, who is the manager of the transgender program at the Beijing LGBT Center. And they are also the coordinator of empowering China's transgender community. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Saji could not be here with us in person because of the coronavirus crisis. Uh, but they very kindly agreed to join us via um, a teleconference. And it is almost three in the morning now in Beijing, so I ask you to really give them a very warm welcome. Hello. Hello, sisters, brothers, and siblings. Why these three words? Because in China, the trans community believe that the whole community is a big family. So, sisters, brothers, and siblings. Imagine this, before you came to this hate talk and you had three glasses of water, two bottles of beer, and um, four cups of coffee, perhaps, but you couldn't go to the bathroom for two hours until you came and sat in this uh, studio right now. How do you feel? That's something I experienced almost every day during my primary school. As a genderqueer, a person who doesn't identify as male or female, having to go to female's bathroom was one of my childhood nightmares. But at that time, I had no idea why and uh, had, had nobody to talk to. But this is only one inconvenience happens to transgender people in China, with almost zero policy related to transgender, we face huge discrimination and misunderstanding from the society, especially the discrimination from our own family. We all feel confused about ourselves and the world around us when we were teenagers, right? So what's it like to be a trans teenager? Well, a 17-year-old sister decided to tell her parents about her gender identity and was, yeah, so excited because she loved them. After telling them the truth, her parents decided to send her to the mental health hospital and said that she could only leave if she signed agreement and not be trans anymore. It was so, so dramatic to see her dream, the bright future and unconditional support from her parents crashed suddenly. In fact, according to 2017 Chinese Population Survey report, of 1,640 respondents, only six of them reported that they have never experienced any kind of domestic violence. It may make you wonder, how do people in China generally think about transgender? I'm afraid that most Chinese people have never heard of this term, transgender. Even for me, before college, I had no idea about transgender, not to mention the word like non-binary, gender, queer. I knew I was different, but had no language to name it. Until I met brother Lucas. The first time I saw him, he was doing a workshop about um, sexuality and gender diversity in our university. I couldn't believe his trans, you know, his mustache, his body shape. What a handsome man. But, <laughs> but besides his looks, he also said something that I still remember to this day. He said that people think that we are confused about our own gender. However, we know best because we think about gender every day. So with this portal, Lucas, 
we organized one of the first China LGBT student groups, diversity. This group inspired me to rethink about my own gender and the meaning of my life. It also strengthened my determination to work for the trans family. It is perhaps the reason why today it is me who is talking to you about trans stories in China. In 2018, I started my job as a transgender program manager for Beijing LGBT Center, the oldest LGBT center in China. We launched national trans hotline and uh, weekly trans space. The trans space is not as fancy or complicated like other, our other work like policy advocacy, no. Just some simple activities, like makeup workshop, learning self-defense, or eating hot pot together. Just to make everyone have a sense of belonging and support. Through this hotline and trans space, we received many emergency cases, domestic violence, um, conversion therapy, and even suicides. Sometimes the cases were too heavy for us to deal with. I realized how fragile and confused I could be, especially since I had just started my work. I felt hopeless until I met Sister Xu, a 47-year-old trusting woman. That was uh, one morning. I arrived earlier with my colleague at the center to feed our three cats. We call them diversity, respect, and cooperation. We heard someone gently knocking the door, you know, not very strongly, confidently, but very gently. We opened the door. There was a really tall lady wearing a lovely long black dress. She spoke in almost a whisper. Uh, is this a Beijing LGB center? We said, yes, yes, welcome. She came in. After offering water and sitting together, we started to talk. And my colleague was very excited. She asked loads of questions like, how did you know about the center? Do you have family in Beijing? Many questions. Gradually, Sister Xu started to feel at home. She also became very excited and happy. So the whole day, she just sat on the sofa and dragged every trans visitor in the center into her conversation. The young trans folks were also inspired being able to see an elder sister. It opened their eyes to the potential possibilities and the hope for their own futures. During the conversation, um, we got to know that Sister Xu's company knew about her gender identity and was going to fire her. But with the support of the community, we find a job for her in Shenzhen, another city. Until now, she sometimes came back to Beijing to visit us. With the help of a brother, I found out who I am and became devoted to trans community. With the help of community, a sister was able to leave the prejudice and unjust environment and find a new job. Sister and brother are not just some words we say to each other. Sister and brother are family. It is the support we gave to each other to make every family member feel safe, warm, and loved. Thank you.